Hey everyone, FPS Chazzle here. Welcome back to Let's Play Dangerous Waters with Reinforce Alert 1.40. We're playing Belling the Cat here. Uh, we are to track a Soviet exercise that is uh, going to be taking place shortly. And if we got any boomers coming out of the barn, we are to track them as well. Stop tracking the exercise and track the boomers instead. We got some Corvettes off to the south-southwest here. They're coming up, pinging pinging like crazy, making a whole hell of a lot of noise. Everyone knows they're here right now. They're not hiding from anyone. Got another contact off this way. Speed unknown currently. Modeling at 15 knots. Seems to be moving north, northeast. That general direction. 030-ish. Heading kind of that way. And we are currently streaming the floating wire, which is all the way streamed, but I don't think at the surface. Uh, let's zoom out. Is it up there? It is up there. Ah, so it is at the surface at this depth very well. They, uh, they've they made the antenna, or the streaming wire, a lot longer in Reinforce Alert. I think it's probably three times longer than in the stock game. And uh, so yeah, we can go five knots at this depth. And uh, we have comms. So nothing has come through, but we'll keep that up. We'll keep comms. Keep comms alert. We went up for a a little periscope depth check in the last episode, and uh, there's a May around flying up there, so I'm not trying to get my I'm not trying to get mass detected, which happens when you're at periscope depth always and forever. Doesn't matter if you have the masts up or not, so don't want to be staying up there for too long at all. The range on that isn't very long. We could even draw it out. I'd say max two nautical miles. So if there's nothing within that bubble, probably not going to get mass detected, but it's not worth risking it. So just stay away from there. We're currently driving at 500 feet. This is where you kind of start skirting mad detection range. So that is why we are down here trying to avoid mad detection. Now this is 500 feet at the keel. The manual mentions 500 feet is about where this starts, but I would think that would mean 500 feet from like the top of the sail. So if you want to do that, you're going to have to go down like another 45, 50 feet to get beneath that threshold. But and we're fine here. I might, maybe, maybe, maybe. but I, I'm, I'm good with this for now. 500 feet. They'd have to be pretty close to the surface, I think, to get a mad detection on me at 500 feet here. All right, so what do we got? What have we got? Okay, we're at the we're at the hundred scale, so anything I want to see is gonna be right in the middle there of our spectrum output. Oh yeah, look at that. There's our friend off to the uh our friend going north east northeast, whatever. No uh north northeast, this guy. Just in the cusp of our toad. We're gonna to lose him in the toad here in a second. Let's uh let's turn directly due south here. Come right to course one, eight, We're gonna three, get rid of these waypoints for now. That's fine. Have to try and make sure not to get okay, so we got the disputed area here. This line indicates what is kind of more or less technically uh Russian territorial waters. Uh, this might be Soviet era. I don't remember. Um what the Russians are claiming the actual border is is here. But the U.S. This is, this is the disputed area, so the U.S. doesn't recognize this as Russian territorial waters. So we're kind of in a gray area here, but we are not to actually go into Russian territorial waters here. So we'll avoid that. Ostrov, Ostrov, Ostrov. It means island in Russian. My be uh, one of my best friend's last name is Ostrov, as we Americans pronounce it. I always like to tell him that his last name means island in Russian. Okay, and then we're picking up... Or is this our friend? Wait, who is this? This may be a reciprocal. 210? No, th th these are our buddies over this way. 210. Our buddies over that way making a lot of noise. Sometimes it's better to zoom it out. Kind of easier to see. If, if you get a little cl a little closer here, the waveform kind of makes it harder to see. There's a line because, you know, it's going back and forth. But here it's kind of a little more averaged out. Kind of easier to see. <laughs> oh, this this contact is reasonably strong over here for our our buddy, but uh, 
No second frequency yet. Still clear on that front. Nothing on the broadband besides these whales. We're turning, we're turning good. The rest of the sonar is... Oh, what was that? Did I just see something? I thought I did. Steady on course. One, eight, three. I guess I'm seeing things. I thought I was seeing something right around here. But I guess not. Once you stare this long enough, it's like, oh, am I seeing anything? I don't know. Hmm. No, it's pretty clear these are the only contacts we're holding right now. That is just me. No need to fret. If you were fretting. Okay, Toad is turning. So we're losing our... What is that? There's like a little anomaly there. We're losing our friend off this way to our Toad for a second here. As we turn due south to get them kind of both turned up. So they're both active intercepts, but we're also tracking them passively. Not Sierra 1, Sierra 2. Oh, that's, uh, it's hard to tell. They're pinging so rapidly that I can't see which one of these lines up better. Okay, so Sierra 4 is supposed to have a lot more data on it, but I think the trackers are getting kind of wonky there. They're supposed to be we should be seeing like two different pingers down that way. They're just about right on top of each other, honestly. And the auto crew doesn't seem to be keeping track of it because it, do, it does seem to be. Let's let's check out the frequency output here. It should tell us one of these should be a thirty-seven fifty. Yeah, see, there it is. <coughs> We're getting two different frequencies from that way, but the auto crew does not seem to be able to distinguish that. Which is unfortunate. Very unfortunate. How's our toad coming along here? Honestly, I probably could go a little faster, but with these ASW assets, they're probably dropping sona buoys and stuff. Just not gonna risk it. You know, hang out at five knots. We're kind of already making a decent chunk of noise as it is. Going five knots here. This toad's about to be straightened out here. And our bad boy over this way will be coming out at 160. There he is. The sonar is telling me a fishing boat, but it could be anything. We're just not seeing that second frequency yet. Still kind of far off here. Let's, uh... Get our little 1.69 time warp going on here. Just keep that going for a little bit. Anything up here on the radio? Oh. <clears throat> nope, still just this family gram. 1659 feet, that's a random distance. Does that signify anything? Uh, always happens when I'm clicking something else. I'm just gonna convert that to meters because that that's, that's an odd number. Uh, no, 1659 divided by 3.2808. No, that's nothing. It's just 1659. Sorry. Sorry about that. The game does not like it when pings are going on and you're going out and coming in and whatever. Oh, I should have paused it when I was doing that. We're going at time warp here. Warp speed. Ooh, am I seeing a second? Nope. No second. What about over here for these guys? Well, what second am I expecting for them? Platform reference. I'm expecting a 265, okay. Jeez, those pings are coming in, coming in hot, straight, and normal. Not seeing any, uh, ooh. Oh, I think they're starting to reciprocate on each other. Yeah, that's kind of annoying. It's going to make me think I'm seeing more stuff than I really am since they're reciprocating. Maybe I should just go, like, due east that way because there, there isn't anything out here, so anything I'll be seeing down this way is just true bearing stuff. Hmm. Let's, uh, yeah, let's do it. Let's come due east here. Do mostly due east. We'll kind of do a, uh... A little something Helm like that course. there. One, one, three. Helm Ugh, how are these pings doing? These guys seem to be flying in rather rather tight formation here. Sierra 4, 
Okay, we got a new mark on them. I think the TMA is actually keeping up with that now. We've had this track for a long time, haven't we? Where's the frickin' centroid on this damn ruler? I don't even know. There it is. Okay. They probably had a course change in there at some point, or a speed change. I don't know if one hour data is even use useful to me. I mean, look at this. The 10 minute stack has so much data in it, it's not even funny. These guys are pinging like madmen. Okay, I wanted you to hold a speed. It's kind of just picking one. What speed was I saying they're doing? 15 knots. They've been kind of hold. They've been pretty much holding constant bearing this whole time. 15 knots. What we need is some real good, uh, real nice course change here. Start firming up the solution. And we're not getting much variability in this. At this 15 knot juncture. Oh, okay. I just messed that up. That was. I'm not sure which one is actually real. At this point, we're just kind of guessing. But it was up here originally. Oh, why are you holding the course? Do that. Ooh, I just put it like around top of each other, which isn't terribly. Steady on course. One. One. Isn't necessarily three. wrong. They could be right on top of each other. These these pings are coming in really hot. They're kind of flying in formation here, as it were. Nothing on any of these sensors. Nothing on the broadband. So since their signal is still rather weak, I'm expecting this is not where they actually are. They're probably doing five knots wherever they are. They're probably... Five knots seems kind of silly. Okay, well, five knots, the max range on five knots is like around here. It literally cannot be like any further than this, even at five knots. So I don't think that's right. Uh, let's try maybe seven knots. There's like a little bit of staggery stagger to this solution. Seven knots kind of works further away. They do seem to be kind of far. Let's go with this. We'll go with the seven knots. Maybe let's do like a nice eight. They usually like like a nice eight knots or something. We'll do eight knots on that. Sierra four. We'll do eight knots on him. The pings have been getting louder, but okay, you're gonna have to come back to an hour because you refuse to update. <laughs> We'll do something like this for the time being. What are you doing? I was about to say, what is it? was showing the, the frickin' their sound for my thing. <sighs> it would be nice to kind of switch back completely to try and get some better solution. I mean, the pings have been getting louder, so maybe two thirds is a good thing, but they're, they're, their overall signal strength is rather weak. Is that a whale? A whale reciprocal it is. Okay, toad is straight. We're chilling. How's our depth looking? It's gonna be getting shallow soon, so I gotta be cognizant of that. What is Sierra 1 up to? Is that where we are still expecting to see Sierra 1 at 28,000 yards in the course of 024? Not really, no. Okay. Speed may be lower than... Eh, not sure. We'll go with this for now. Somewhere off in that... It could very well just be a fishing boat somewhere off in that vicinity. We're kind of... We're moving in on them. It's harder as a human to distinguish the changes in TMA when you're just doing it this way. Uh, don't got a lot of good bearing rate. Was I seeing, or am I seeing, multiple signals here on this front? No, I don't think I am. I think it was just with that little time lapse going on, it was kind of seeming like there were multiple signals. It's just the one. But since these signals are both still rather weak, 
That leads me to believe they're not really closing on my position. So there's two signals over here for sure. Seeing both of them. And I think I was seeing a second frequency off that way. I don't want to strain my eyes too much trying to see it, but I thought I was. But definitely seeing two signals over this way. And they're kind of right on top of each other like what we got do going on there. What are all these random dots for? I guess probably Sierra 2. <laughs> all the different solutions. Okay. Sierra 3 we've been getting data on for a while. Let's see what... This should look pretty similar to what we've got. Oh, dude. Dude, come on now. Okay. What is this? The, tw the one hour? Let's get it just... Let's, let's do the 20 minute. Sure. I mean, it works. Right kind of in the thicket of them. I kind of put it there on purpose. <sighs> that works for now. Why is there... Oh, that line is pointing towards something. I thought that was like a, uh, like a finish line or something. <laughs> so let's see here. Steady as she goes, Sierra 1. We can bring this back to the hour long. See what that's looking like. That kind of looks a little better down this way at 10 knots. Has this not been updating? I think it has been. I haven't been paying attention that that has been updating, but yeah. It could even potentially be, get, could it be going that much slower? I don't know. Let's see. Could it be going that much slower? No, it doesn't really work. It's got it. It's probably doing around. Well, what would uh, the old eight knots look like? The old tried and true eight knots. Well, it works here too, a little bit, kind of. Hard to say for certain. Always hard to say until we get in closer. I would like to switch back and get a little more lag going on here, but I don't want to move out of this area and I don't want to move into Russian territorial waters. I don't want to backtrack then have to come all the way back in. Not what I want to do. Let's get this wire in. Not going to bother with that for now. Uh, does it say anything about comms? No, I mean, we have our orders. Some uh, intel could come in, but we have our orders. But I n never usually like having the floating wire out in case the defecation starts hitting the oscillation. You don't want to lose the wire. Don't want to have to spend the time reeling it back in so you don't lose the wire. Where did our friend go? One five six. Okay, that's still as quiet as ever. That really has not picked up much in signal strength. That was a little bit too much. So the eight knot thing seems a little more plausible. A little more plausible. So instead of being this far back, it might have started out right about here. So in that in that case, we haven't really gotten that much closer to him throughout this time. So that makes a little more sense with what we've been seeing. But yes, this is a good Bill Nichols mission. Lots of build-up. Not really going to get caught off guard. You will in good ways, not in like Sovietskaya ways where it's like five subs all start out in close proximity to each other and then the Russians start shooting their SSN-27 ASWs everywhere. Their torpedoes strapped to rockets going flying, chaotic, whatever. But this is a nice, nice, nice slow build up. We could potentially. Mm, I'll have to think. We, uh, mm, I might consider doing some backtracking to try and firm up some of these solutions here. Because we're, we, we're, we got, we have no one on broadband currently, so no speed data. No confirmed speed data, at least. So we can try and do that and get some firmed up solutions that way. But yeah, I'm going to stop here. Thanks for watching, everyone. I'll see you guys next time. Have a good one. And as always, good hunting.